Uh, first of all, I drew out the plan for the size of a piece of foam I had ordered, but I'd ordered the wrong type of foam, so that was very soft and squidgy, which wasn't what I wanted. I tried to transfer the design, but I kind of gave up copying the original and just went my own way once I started drawing directly on the foam. And I tried to level the top to make sure it was kind of the same height all the way along. And make some weird shaped bricks and blocks, which looked quite cool. And then I got a nice sharp craft knife and just cut away the foam in between each block. And it was harder than it looked because once you sliced into the foam, and he went to slice again next to it. There was no resistance. The foam just squashed away from the blade. So you needed quite a sharp blade to, to make it work. I'll just pick out bits of foam in between each stone block. Tried to make a nice big block and some little blocks and different shapes and sizes to keep it going, keep it looking fresh. I wanted to make it look old, so I wanted a bit of design in it, you know, a bit of mottled surface. So I wouldn't bother if I did attack the middle of a block with the blade by accident, which did happen a couple of times, just so I stuck my blade in there. It didn't matter because I wanted to make the surface a bit rounder. They didn't look so flat at the front. Now at this point I released it from the rest. I don't have a hot wire to cut it with. I just tried my best to position it in a way where I could get the blade in there and cut it as neatly as I could. I wasn't intending to do the top or the side because I just wanted it as a backdrop to put on a shelf and have a dry stone wall as a background for a shelf I thought it was quite cool so uh, eventually I managed to figure out how to get the blade in there and release it tried to keep it as even as I could but that's very tricky when you're trying to use a very small blade but uh, if I decided to really get into doing this sort of thing I hot wire to cut it with, and then you get a much neater edge and this is definitely the wrong type of foam for this sort of thing not the right sort at all I didn't want to uh, make weird shaped blocks because if you were building a dry stone wall you tried to pick blocks that were the size you wanted and uh, I didn't want to make it look weird, so at this point I wasn't intending to be the top. But it seemed to be working, so I went along with it, kept going, and decided to pass the lines between each block along the top, just in case it would actually work out. So that they look like individual blocks rather than one piece. And I had to cut out considerable wedges because it was too soft, I couldn't just put dainty little cuts in there. Had to put a decent gap with the blade just to make it cut, otherwise it wouldn't cut at all. But it looked quite good. It was looking a bit odd at this stage, but I could see it forming and thinking, well, I've got this far down, I might as well keep going. Let's see what I can make of it. It was my fault for buying the wrong type of foam. What I needed was XPS foam, which is quite solid. Um, almost like that packing stuff. But uh, it's quite dense. So it's very good for model making. You can push into it and it will stay the shape you push it to. So. 
you can use your carving tools and you can paint and sand it. I completely got that rock type of fur, but I thought, well, I can't afford to just waste money, so I'm going to make it work. I'm going to try to use this farm as best as I can. It took me a couple of blades because the foam was really killing the sharpness of the blades. But eventually, I got some work. I was trying to use a toothpick to press down the edges, but it wasn't well maintaining the shape as soon as I was touching it. It was just springing back to how it was. So I ended up just using the toothpick to try to pick bits of foam out of the gaps, to widen the gaps and make it look a little bit more realistic. In a dry stone wall, as the name implies, there isn't any real mortar holding the blocks together they're piled up dry. The skill of making the wall is choosing the right size blocks for each area. I was trying to use my knife to sort of rough up and round the edges a bit. And it was quite tricky because the foam was just way too soft for that. So then, what I didn't film was I actually used a Dremel. I found that that made the edges a bit rounder and roughed up the middles of each block. Um, and it did actually work to some extent, I just wanted a bit of roughness there. So it wasn't completely flat and smooth. I wanted to get the black paint right in the gaps. And make it nice and dark in between the gaps so you can't see any foam. It's not, not very nice when you finish a model and you can see unpainted models stuck in the top. I wanted to make sure I covered everything. But the whole foam needed to be covered anyway, but uh, just to seal it to make sure you can paint on it and do what you want once it's sealed. So the black was acting as a shadow colour for the image in the gaps and also some kind of sealant for the foam. Once it was all black, I then went over the edges of some of the rocks, not the whole thing, with a fairly dry brush of white. And I knew that this would stand out quite well it's black, but I didn't want it to be too intense. Turns out I could have actually made it a lot more intense without it dry and it didn't fade quite considerably. But it worked quite nicely, made everything start to get some kind of texture to it and shape and form. Helped make things a bit more visible from the black, because you can't see anything when it's all black.
Once that dried, I realized I could go a bit heavier handed. So I did it again. Tried to cover different areas, but do it a bit more thicker, let's say, with the paint more dry. I to add some colour, I didn't want to put the colour in the same place on each stone, but I was kind of trying to be aware of where the light source would be, to keep it relatively easy to view, rather than like the light was coming from every different angle. which would make it look awkward. But at the same time, I didn't want to put it on the side, the top left of every single block, because that would look weird. Try some various colours. I realised after watching the footage that the camera kept refocusing when my hand got into the picture. And it was focusing on my hand instead of on my object. So I tried to. The next project I'll do, I'll try to um, use a manual mode of the camera so I can turn off the autofocus. I was making some darker colours, cover up some of the white. Get in there with some darker shades. Make as various shades as I can with the same few colours. I didn't want to use too many colours because that would make a bit very odd. But um, in reality, the rocks can be quite varied in colour. But for a piece like this, it would look really weird if some rocks were very much one colour and others were completely different. So I just used a very, very limited palette of colours. Reds and greys and browns. And just mix them with each other to make different shades. Some I used quite wet and some I used virtually a dry brush. I just went over making natural, as natural as I could, rocks. Between each coat I was sticking in the windowsill and putting a very small USB fan on it to dry it. And it dried relatively quickly, very fast. The coats were quite thin, even though some of them were quite watery. They were still quite thin, dried very far. Which meant it was a bit more fun to do because you didn't have to wait hours for each coat to dry before you could do the next. Wet colours on top of wet colours. And allow them to mix on the actual foam. And not actually blend them together first. They get a more natural colour effect on the rock surface. And because I did attack it with the Dremel and uh, disturbed that surface, it's not dead smooth, it's got pits and furrows 
in the surface of each rock. Which I hope lends to the more realistic look of the rock. But also when you use the watery colours, they go into those furrows and then the thicker colours stay on top which helps give it some dimension. So once the green have dried, I wanted to use something to be moss. I was reckon my brains what I could use. And I decided to use some parsley. It's nice and cheap. And then it looks a little like moss, but the grains are a bit too big, so I uh, ripped out the mortar and the pestle. And I just crushed some down until it was a bit more moss sized for my wall. That would look um, a more realistic size for that size of the wall. It didn't take much crushing to get it a size I was fairly happy with. Now, uh, I thought I could be quite sparing with the glue and just dip it in tiny spots, but it, it, the glue was just too, too viscous, too thick, and it just, no. It really wasn't playing well in little tiny droplets. Um, but once you place the glue on, you sprinkle the uh, the parsley moss all over the, the glue. A lot of it will fall back off, so you can control to some extent how bad it gets. I tried to be quite picky at first how it was going on, but. In the end, I just plastered glue on in places. It got quite addictive, it was quite fun. And uh, I might have gone a little bit overboard with how much moss I put on. But to be fair, I did come from an area which is quite damp, and the walls around here do kind of look quite mossy. The air is quite damp, and it rains a lot. It's England after all. <laughs> So, it looks like a lot now, but a lot of that will drop off once it's uh, dried and I move the piece to a more suitable place for it to dry. Uh, a lot of it will fall off anyway. So only the places that touch the glue will actually remain. It would be nice too, once the whole thing is finished, to be able to coat it in glue, but with a brush that will ruin it. So probably knock up this off. So I will wait to give it a final coat of something to seal it all together until I've got something that I can spray on to seal it all together. Now the mosses are dried up, I figure it will last a very long time before anything horrible happens to it. But if it does rot or go horrible, it'll just add to the texture of the wall. Make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, so it looks very well done at the moment, but uh, a lot of that was rubbed off. So it's uh, the last few areas recovered. I left it to the glue dry. Knocked off quite a lot of the mossy areas. It looks way too much. It's definitely the wrong type of foam, it's still quite springy, but I feel quite pleased with the final result. Thanks for watching, and catch you in the next one.